Today I'll be talking about liquidity delta and Uniswap B3. Let's say that inside a Uniswap B3 pool with token X and token Y, we add delta X and delta Y tokens in the price range between P of A and P of B. When we add liquidity, the liquidity will change. So the question I want to ask is, what is the change in liquidity? The answer is that the liquidity delta is equal to this equation. Delta X over 1 over the square root of the current price P minus 1 over the square root of P of B. And liquidity delta is also equal to delta Y over the square root of current price P minus square root of P of A. Furthermore, if we set P of A and P of B to 0 and infinity, then liquidity delta will be equal to delta X times square root of current price P and which is equal to delta y over the square root of price p. This is the same equation for liquidity delta that we've seen in Uniswap B2. So for the rest of the video, we'll derive this equation and then this equation. Okay, so let's start by reviewing some math in Uniswap B3. Let's say that the current liquidity is represented by this blue line and the current price is p. The price range p of a and p of b are here. The curve for the real reserves are drawn in orange, where X of R and Y of R are the real amounts of token X and token Y. The equation for the real reserves are given by X of R plus L divided by the square root of P of B times Y of R plus L times the square root of P of A, and this is equal to L square, where L is the liquidity L. Using this equation, we can derive that L is equal to X of R over 1 over the square root of current price P minus 1 over the square root of P of B. And this will be also equal to Y of R over square root of P minus square root of P of A. These equations were all discussed in the previous video, and for this video, we will be using these equations to derive liquidity delta for Uniswap B3. Okay, let's define liquidity delta. When we add or remove liquidity from Uniswap B3, the number L changes. So let's come up with an equation for what liquidity delta is. We'll define L of 0 to be equal to liquidity before we add liquidity delta x and delta y. And we'll define L of 1 to be liquidity after adding delta x and delta y in the price range P of A and P of B. We also define current price as P, and we'll define liquidity delta to be equal to L1 minus L0. Liquidity after minus liquidity before. Let's take a moment to look at graphs for before we have liquidity and after we have liquidity. Here in blue, we have the graph for L0, curve for liquidity before we add liquidity, the current price P, and the price ranges P of A and P of B. The curve for the real reserves are drawn in orange, where X of R is the real reserves for token X and Y of R is the real reserves for token Y. When we add liquidity delta x, then from x sub r, we will shift over to the right to get x sub r plus delta x. Likewise, when we add liquidity for delta y, from y of r, we add delta y, so we shift this tick above. And the curve for the real reserve after adding liquidity is drawn in pink. Here's the curve for L1. This is after we added liquidity delta x and delta y. We can observe two things in this graph. First, the pink curve is a translation of this green curve. On this green curve, when the price is at P of A, then the real amount of token Y will be zero. And likewise, when the price on this green curve is at P of B, then the real amount of token X will be zero. Another thing to observe is that the prices P, P of A, and P of B all land on a straight line that extends from the origin to each price on the blue curve. For example, if you follow the straight line from the origin to the current price P and then extend it, this will be where the price of P will be on the green line. Likewise, if you start from the origin and follow a line to P of A and then extend it further, this will be the price P of A on the green line. This is because the price of the tokens are determined by the ratio of the tokens X and Y in the pool. Okay, this graph describes the curve before adding liquidity L0. In this case, the curve for the real reserve will be in orange and the curve after adding liquidity L1. And the curve for the real reserve for L1 is described in the curve for pink. Next, I'm gonna answer the question how to calculate liquidity delta. The first step to calculating liquidity delta is to write real curve for L0 using the variables L0, current price P, and the price ranges P of A and P of B. We already know that the real reserve for this curve is described by X of R plus 
L0 over square root of P of B times Y of R plus L0 times square root of P of A, and this will be equal to L0 squared. The next step to finding liquidity delta is to write real curve for L1. Well, we know that the real x increased from x of bar to x of bar plus delta x, and likewise we know that real y increased from y of bar to y of bar plus delta y. So what we can do is take this equation and then modify it. So I'll copy it and then paste it here. First, I'll replace all of L of zeros with L of ones. Okay, next, the real reserves are described by x of bar plus delta x and y of bar plus delta y. So I'll replace x of bar with x of bar plus delta x and y of bar with y of bar plus delta y. So I'll shift this over to the right and then copy this, paste it here, and then I'll do the same for y of bar. Move this part of the equation over to the right, y of bar plus delta y plus this part of the equation. And this equation describes the real curve for L1. What we did is we took this equation and simply replaced some of the variables. We replaced L0 with L1 and x of r with x of r plus delta x and y of r with y of r plus delta y. Okay, the next step is to rewrite L0 and L1 using this formula. So I'll copy this and then paste it here. And then replace L with L0. And we'll do something similar for L1. So I'll copy this, paste it here. L1 is equal to, is equal to. We'll copy this part of the equation and then replace some of the variables. For L1, x of bar will be these two terms, x of bar plus delta x. So I'll remove this and then copy this term, x of bar plus delta x, and then paste it here. And likewise, we'll do the same for this part of the equation. Copy, paste, and y of bar will be equal to y of bar plus delta y. Okay, so we rewrote L0 and L1. The final step is to calculate delta L, liquidity delta, and this will be simply be equal to L1 minus L0. So from this equation above, we know that L1 will be equal to this equation. So I'll copy it, paste it, minus what's L0. L0, we can rewrite it as this part of the equation, paste it, and this will be equal to, notice that the bottom is the same, and from the top, we have x of r plus delta x minus x of r. So the top, we'll have simply delta x, and the bottom does not change. So that is one expression for delta L, liquidity delta. Okay, we can do the same using this part of the equation. So this will be equal to, copy this, L1 is equal to this equation minus L0 will be this equation, paste it, and this is equal to, again the bottom are the same, the denominators are the same, the numerators we have y of r plus delta y minus y of r, so that's y of r minus y of r, the top, what we have left is delta y, and the denominator will be this expression. And we have solved for liquidity delta L in terms of delta Y also. These are two useful equations to express liquidity delta in terms of amount of tokens that were added or removed and the current price and the price ranges. As last part of this video, let's see how liquidity delta in Uniswap B3 converges to liquidity delta expressed in Uniswap B2 when we set the price range from zero to infinity. What I mean by this is I'm going to show that for the price range P of A and P of B set to be 0 to infinity, then liquidity delta L will be equal to delta X times the square root of current price P, and this will be also equal to delta Y over square root of current price P. This is the exact same equation as liquidity delta for Uniswap B2. First, let's find liquidity delta L using this equation that we just derived. So I'll copy this and then paste it here. And we said that we're going to set P of B to be infinity. So we're saying 1 over the square root of P of B. 1 over an extremely large number is close to 0. 
So we'll say 1 over infinity is approximately equal to 0. So we'll treat this part as being equal to 0. So I'll just cancel it out. And what are we left with? From the top, we're left with delta x. The bottom, we're left with 1 over the square root of p. Since this part is very close to 0, we'll just say this is equal to 0. Delta x over 1 over the square root of p is simply equal to, this will be equal to delta x from the top. We're here we're dividing twice, so this will turn out to be multiplication, and we'll have square root of p up at top, and we get the final result, delta x times square root of p. So we solved one part of this equation. Let's now do the same to derive the second part of the equation. Again, I'll scroll up, and then next, I'll use this part of the equation. So liquidity delta is also equal to, liquidity delta is also equal to this equation. And we said that P of A is equal to zero. So P of A is equal to zero. So we simply cancel it out. And this will be equal to, from the top, we have delta Y. And from the bottom, P of A, we canceled it out because p of a is equal to zero, and we're left with square root of p. And that is the second part of the equation for liquidity delta for Uniswap B2. And that completes the proof that liquidity delta for Uniswap B3 converges to liquidity delta for Uniswap B2 when the price range p of a and p of b are set to zero and infinity.